All right. Well, welcome everybody um, for the first CalCare office hours of 2022. So excited to have all of you that are here with us in Zoom and all of you that are joining us um, on Facebook. So my name is Erica Ferriston and uh, my pronouns are she, yes. her. Um, I'm the director I'm of Healthcare for All Los Angeles, along with Maureen Cruz. Um, and then we have our co-chairs, Bronwyn Major, Cheng Sun Lim, and Gina Harris. Um, Healthcare for All Los Angeles is a local chapter of Healthcare for All California, a statewide nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. Our mission is to achieve a universal healthcare system through single payer public financing with the goal that all California residents have comprehensive, high quality health care. And um, thanks to the California Nurses Association, California has a single payer bill or a Medicare for all bill. It is Assembly Bill 1400, the Guaranteed Health Care for All Act, um, which we call CalCare. So um, before we start our office hours today, we're gonna begin uh, with a land acknowledgement um, this land acknowledgement was borrowed with permission from white people for black lives and healthcare for all Los Angeles acknowledges the Tongva and Quiche peoples as the traditional caretakers of the land we currently reside on. That is the Los Angeles Basin and Southern Channel Islands. We seek to honor the land and the courageous people who have been its stewards modeling a tradition of resistance, seeking liberation. We pay our respects to ancestors, elders, relations past, present, and emerging. And if you are outside the greater Los Angeles area, you can find out whose land you're on by going to native-land.ca. And with that, um, Paul, can I ask you to please put up uh, to screen share the seven principles of CalCare? So, um, what is CalCare? Um, CalCare is a bill um, that the nurses wrote. And as it says up here, it is the solution to our broken healthcare system. It will guarantee healthcare as a human right in the state of California by providing comprehensive high quality healthcare to all, um, just like Medicare for all would do nationally. And um, they say as California goes, so does the nation. That is the intention with CalCare AB 1400. Um, and this is how it happened in Canada. Canada got their single payer system when one province, Saskatchewan, um, implemented single payer and the rest of the country followed. So these are the main principles of CalCare. Um, number one, universal coverage. Everybody in, nobody out. Everybody, regardless of race, sex, gender identification, country of origin, disability status, immigration status, marital status, age, um, income, employment status, everybody gets the care they need regardless of the ability to pay. Number two, it is a single public program, a single payer publicly funded through progressive taxation to cover all necessary care in California eliminating billions in bloat and waste and saving people thousands on their healthcare costs. Number two, fully comprehensive benefits. This includes medical, dental, hearing, vision, mental health, prescription drugs, uh, long-term care, um, drug rehabilitation, and more. All decisions about care would be made between you and your doctor and your healthcare providers, not the insurance companies. 
Um, CalCare would give you freedom to choose your provider, something we do not have now. But under CalCare, there would be no more in-network or out-of-network. You would have the freedom to choose any doctor or hospital you'd like. Uh, free at the point of service, no more co-pays, premiums, or deductibles. You arrive at your doctor's office, show them your CalCare card, and get the care you need. It's that simple. Uh, just transition. Of course, the nurses being a union, they are thinking about um, all the people who you know, are employed right now by the insurance companies. And so they included this in as a main principle, funding and programs to protect and support any displaced workers in the insurance industry. And finally, patient care based on patient need. No more financial incentives to avoid providing necessary care, including value-based payment models for providers. So um, this puts the care back into healthcare. So um, with that, I just wanna open it up to those who have joined us on our Zoom if there are any questions or comments at this time. And if not, oh, Mark, what's your, what's your question? Um, I'm sorry I haven't been in on many of your meetings, but I've been attending every Sunday the PDA Medicare for All town halls. Wonderful. And and uh, I've also been negligent in my attendance to East Valley Indivisibles. But the last time I was online with them, and I was wondering if any of you know, uh, my, my uh, uh, assembly member, uh, Audrey Nazarian, is yeah. evidently a co-author of this bill. And he made the point months ago that single payer wasn't necessarily the only way to go. And I was wondering if, if you had heard anything more from him on that. I just kind of did a Scooby-Doo you know, when, when he said that, because then I thought, oh, could this be like Tony Cardenas supporting, you know, Medicare for all, you know, I'm a supporter, but I'm not going to do a damn fucking thing, you know, other than take credit for being a co-sponsor and supporter. Um, Mark, thank you so much for sharing that with us. So a couple of things, um, I totally hear you and, and I am there with you on the Scooby-Doo moment. Here's what I'm going to say. So to answer your question directly, I have not heard anything directly from, you know, Nazarian. So I don't know anything more than what you've shared and maybe somebody else on this Zoom has. And if you have, please, you know, jump in and weigh in. And I will say this. Uh, here's how I'm looking at this right now is um, we need to get Assembly Bill 1400 is a policy bill and it's one thing at a time. I was going to go over this in a minute, but we have some, um, you know, steep, this bill has um, hurdles coming up very quickly. And if it, if it does not make it over any of the next few hurdles, then we can't take it any further. So one is that um, January 3rd or January 6th is that it gets referred out of rules into the health committee. It must get then passed out of the health committee by January 14th. And here's why I'm saying this and I'm linking it back to Nazarian. Um, if he's committed to voting, yes, he is in the health committee. We need his vote to vote yes on CalCare um, and get it through the health committee. So, you know, when he says things that give you the Scooby-Doo moment, just let it go by and just hold his feet, vote yes in the health committee, vote yes in the health committee, you know what I mean? As long as he does that, we can worry about the, the rest later. If, 
you know, it's, I mean, so that's like, you know, taking it one step at a time. So that's what I would say with that. So I'm, I, I hear you and, you know, it makes my head explode as well, but I'm grateful that he signed on as a co-sponsor and, and trust me, I'm with you. Like, yes, we know there are games that legislators play. I'm going to sign on as a co-sponsor. So I look good to the to the constituents and activists who support this, but I'm really not going to do anything for it. And I might even make a back end deal to kill it. Like, so we're, we're very familiar with all that stuff, but let's just take it one step at a time. He signed on. He's if he's given his commitment to vote yes in the health committee, great, let's just take it there and we'll we'll keep on going. Um, on the other part of this, I'm just gonna um, say this, that study after study has shown in case Nazarian or his staff are listening or anybody else um, who wants to say, you know, there are other ways besides single payer. Um, yes, but study after study, well, not really because um, we've had studies over the last, you know, 30 years, and I know that there are people on this Zoom right now who have been in this movement longer than me. I know this very well, um, and they have all these studies have shown that a single payer public health care system with comprehensive coverage for all would produce mass savings on health care costs. And as a result of single payer savings, um, you know, nationally, but we're focused on California. So California could provide better healthcare coverage to all people and do so for less money than of course the current system or any of these other systems that are proposed that keep the insurance companies in. When you keep the insurance companies in, that, is, that continues the cast healthcare system we have now. It is a tiered system where those who can pay for it get great care and those who can't get you know, subpar care or no care. Um, so the single payer system is what would simplify our healthcare system. Um, it would save billions in administrative costs um, it, by direct negotiating prescription for drug prices and provider payment payments on a statewide basis. CalCare would be able to lower prices for drugs and healthcare services, result, resulting in substantial savings overall there. Um, so basically study after study has shown that it is a single payer system that saves money and saves lives. So thank you, Mark. I see some other hands. Um, Robert. I have got a couple questions and a comment. Uh, are we gonna uh, form a coalition with uh, people that are running other cause like uh, housing? Cause I know a person at Sacramento Tenants Union says the best uh, healthcare plan is don't get sick. After looking at the covered California healthcare costs. Yeah, we, go ahead. Sorry, Robert. And what are we going to do if uh, AB 1400 fails? But um, Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comment and question. And I'm going to go ahead and answer that, but I want to invite other people to answer too. Um, Robert, you're absolutely right. Um, we the people are different coalitions um, need to come together and work together. Um, we have... I can say that Healthcare for All Los Angeles um, is working with other organizations. Um, I can formally say this now that um, Akili of Black Lives Matter, um, Black Lives Matter Los Angeles has agreed to support Healthcare for All Los Angeles. And so he's gonna be speaking at um, an upcoming event that we're having and he's speaking um, as a member of BLM LA. We work with um, DSA LA. Um, we just, you know, we show up for other coalitions like Sunrise Movement Los Angeles have been very supportive. We show up to their things, they show up to our things. So we are working in coalition with others. Um, we need to continue building that coalition um, with other organizations. Um, I, I know that 
I think before this Zoom got started, you know, PDA, PNHP, all of us were all working together on this. Um, I, I hear you, Robert, on what are we gonna do if AB 1400 doesn't pass? We are in the trenches. We have deadlines coming up tomorrow, this week, this week. So let's stay focused on doing the work to pass AB 1400 right now. Um, and then I see Jeffrey's hand. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Jeffrey. Um, two weeks ago, I talked with Kevin McCarty as a coalition dealing with cow cares and reminded him as a co-sponsor of what he hasn't done with Ashkara. So he went back and checked with that. Tomorrow will be a call to Ken Cooley as the chairman of the rules committee to go through on that. Um, the next day is Jim Wood calling him about the health care beyond the information hearing and beyond the scheduled January 14th health committee meeting. We need to get it pushed forward faster than that. Um, that's what I'm working on here in Sacramento. Um, and that's my comments. Oh, Jeffrey, thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing um, your comments and what you're doing. And um, Jeffrey is on it. So um, what are things, those are some of the things he's doing. Here's what we all need to be doing. Um, we are at the point where we need phone calls made. Um, we have had people making legislative visits, keep making those legislative visits. Um, for those of you, if you haven't already, um, Paul, I don't know if you wanna go ahead and put up the QR code for the send a letter in to your assembly member, if you have that. Um, we have a letter that if you haven't sent it in, you can do it right now. Um, when Paul finds it, he's gonna put up the QR code or right now, just take out your phone and type in bit.ly, B-I-T, I'll put it in the chat, um, B-I-T dot L-Y slash, Cal Care Letter, the number two ASM, all lowercase. Cal Care Letter, two ASM, and now I just put that in the Zoom chat. That is a letter. If you if you uh, type that into your browser, a form will pop up, and you just type in your name and your address, and it automatically finds your assembly member and it has a pre-written letter to your assembly member, all you have to do is then press send and it goes to your assembly member. Paul, were you able to find that? Yeah, I put it in the chat from the website. So when they click on it, it says written this, written, this pre-written letter to send to your assemblyman. And it has a link. So the letter is already there and you, know, you fill out the form and it has a pre-written letter and it tells you what district you're in automatically and it goes to your assembly member. So, so it is all you do is click the, the link, chat. type in your name and address, scroll down, hit send, it's done. And you can do that right now. Um, and we need those letters sent in right now. And Paul, you dropped that also in the Facebook uh, chat as well. You're muted, but I'm assuming you did. So awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, the other thing that we can, do is you can, I'm just gonna pull up this link. Give me one second. Um, I'm gonna drop this link, it's find my rep. If you click on that link, if you don't know who your representative is, or if you do know, and you just don't have their phone number, if you go to that link, um, again, very similar thing. You type in your name and address and it tells you, oh, your assembly member is so-and-so and here's their phone number. Find your assembly member, um, call them, leave, you can call them today, tonight, leave a message for them. You can call them every day. This is the week, call them every day, tell them to support Assembly Bill 1400. 
So um, those are two things you can do right now. There are other action items, um, but those are the most important for this week is basically um, contact your assembly member, do it by sending in the pre-written letter, do it by calling them, um, call them every day and tell them to support AB 1400. Okay, I'm gonna go back to other questions. I think it was, um, Mark, you have spoken once, so I'll let me go to Randy and then I'll come back to you, Mark. So Randy, go ahead. We, um, you know, the thing about uh, um, doing this was we had, we have people who are taking money from healthcare insurance companies. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, the clean money campaign, the California clean money campaign has a two, had us a two year bill that might kind of sway some of this because it do some transparency. And I guess my second question is, can, if 1400 fails to get out of committee and does not get a hearing, are we, is it a possibility that we could do a gut and amend just to have a placeholder and um, just to just to put it out there, even as a one year bill? I've heard this, I've heard them talking about this and I just wanted to know if this was the rumor or not. So those are the two questions I have about clean money and whether we could just put a placeholder bill in in case 1400 doesn't fail to get a hearing. Okay, thank you so much, Randy. Um... Um, so, yeah, so um, we are huge supporters of clean money campaign. We have been supporters forever of the clean money campaign. That is the gateway issue to every single issue, right, Randy? Um, clean money gets us everything from, uh, you know, a Green New Deal to Medicare for all. So we love clean money. We support clean money. And Randy, um, what I would ask is we put in the links, we put in the link to our um, letter to send in to the assembly members. And um, we put in a link for people to call their assembly members. Please, if you could reach out to your clean money group tonight, and I'm asking this of all of you, whatever groups you're involved in, please reach out to them tonight, tomorrow. We need all hands on deck supporting AB 1400 right now to get through this first hurdle. We've got to get it from rules into health. We've got to get it then out of health. There are other hurdles after that, but you focus on what's in front of you right now. This is what's in front of us. Get clean money people to help us do this. We're always there for clean money. Um, and when they need us, you know, we will be there for them. So please, 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 all your organizations make these calls now. Um, I'm going to also drop in. We have a toolkit. Um, it's, it's another bit.ly. All of our stuff are bit.ly's, by the way. So bit.ly slash HCA LA toolkit, all lowercase. Bit.ly's are case sensitive. Our bit.ly's are lowercase. I just put in the chat. If you share this toolkit, that's where all of our actions are. That's where you can, the, the letter to send in is there. Uh, the find my representative to make phone calls is there. There's a petition that the California nurses started, it's there. There's a photo petition, which is the cutest thing ever that Feel the Burn is doing, it's there. Um, we're having a, the California nurses is hosting a CalCare Day of Action on January 8th. We're feeling pretty good. It's going to get moved out of rules into health committee. So, you know, the CalCare Day of Action is really going to be to inspiring those healthcare committee members to sign up for, uh, to join a CalCare Day of Action. Where is it? It's in our toolkit. How do you find our toolkit? You go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash H-C-A-L-A -A toolkit, all lowercase, dropped in the um, chats there. So Randy, I think I, oh, and then just, yeah, back to like, I hear you. Uh, thank you for the gut and amend uh, suggestion. Um, we'll take that back, you know, and talk about that. But Randy. Stay focused on let's get it passed, stay positive, 
right now we're working on to get it, it passed out of rules, out of health. Okay, so um, anybody else wanna weigh in on that or should I go to Mark? James, you wanted to weigh in? Go ahead, James. Okay, um, happy new year to everyone. Um, just, regard, just with respect to the clean money, um, that is really part of a condition of us endorsing any candidate. Uh, we do explicitly state it, but we're not, we're a single issue organisation. Um, we do tell people they can't accept any corporate donations. So we always remind them of that. Um, with regard to if AB 1400 um, does not pass, and that possibility is simply getting less and less because the legislators are running out of silly excuses. What um, I have been working on a companion bill um, over last year, but right now we're shelving it because as Erica points out, we need to have all our focus on one goal, which is to pass AB 1400. We have until the 31st of January for it to clear the House and the Senate. So um, honestly, we need to focus our entire energies onto that thing. Because if we have this mentality, oh, well, if that doesn't work out, we have a backup. We're subconsciously setting ourselves up for failure. Do not do that. We're setting ourselves up for success. Go team, go Calcare team. <laughs> go team. I just saw from Paul Newman, got to do a shout out, that Maria Estrada has joined on Facebook. Maria Estrada, greetings. You are a fierce champion in the single payer movement. So just got to give you a shout out. Hello, hello, hello. So glad you joined us on Facebook. If you want to hop on the Zoom, of course, you are welcome. Um, and I'm so glad you're here. So I want to get to Mark because he's been patiently waiting. Um, and thank you, James, for that um, commentary. Mark, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you go. Hey, uh, hi, Maria. She may remember me. Uh, I think Jeffrey may have answered one of my questions. So uh, Anthony Rendon is no longer chairman of the rules committee. He's, he's no longer the gatekeeper. Oh, that's, that's your question? Well, it's one of my questions because uh, Maria can tell you that I was at his office a number of times during SB 562 you know, I think it was in Southgate. Is that where his office is? I think and, so. Yeah, and uh, you know, and I watched I watched a rules committee thing on YouTube, and they called the meeting to order, and then they closed it, and then they all got up and walked away, and I just went, "What the fuck is this? You've got the you've got something that everybody in the state is in support of." and you just won't bring it up. And I talked to Bob Hertzberg and he said, well, with Trump as president, you're, you're not gonna get any of this stuff through uh, given, you know, asking for waivers uh, on Medicare, you know, to run a single payer in California. And I, and I was just like, well, why don't you, you're a supporter of it. Why don't you fight for it? And he goes, oh, it's just not gonna work while Trump is president. And it, it, it was driving me crazy. And, and my, other, my other question is, how much of this is connected to uh, Ro Khanna's bill of uh, having states have the ability to set up single payer healthcare operations statewide using Medicare waivers. Do we need to like get on that train too right away? Okay, so um, thank you, Mark. So a couple of things, um, and I know James is gonna weigh in here. Um, first of all, Mark, thank you so much for your activism. Thank you for your support. Um, when uh, Maria Estrada ran against Rendon, um, so just wanted to acknowledge you for that. Um, Rendon is not the chairman of the rules committee, but he is still speaker of the assembly. 
So again, I just keep kind of going back to one thing at a time, right? So let's get it passed through rules. Um, I think it's, you know, from what I'm hearing on the ground, it's looking like it's, we are going to get it passed out of rules. Now, I can't say that 100%, but I'm just saying, like, I'm feeling optimistic. I'm feeling good. So that's step number one. That's going to happen this week. So please go to our HCALA toolkit and take action. Um, the next week is um, health committee. Um, and it's looking pretty good there as well. Um, we have several um, co-sponsors of the bill that sit in health committee. Um, Nazarian is one. Um, oh, Maria just popped on the Zoom, so she's joining us. Um, let's see, um, Wendy Carrillo is one. Miguel Santiago, who's been really championing this bill is one. Um, McCarty is one. Um, and we did have, there was a, a constituent group who met with Jim Wood, who said, who told this group that if um, the bill gets into the health committee, he will vote for it. So again, one thing at a time, um, that's that. And I don't even remember what else there was, but James, I saw you. Oh, as far as the Rokana bill. So here's the thing. We don't need to focus on that right now. We have everything we need to get CalCare implemented as long as we get it passed. Um, there was a bunch of nonsense put out there, unfortunately, by um, you know some single payer groups, nonsense about the waiver. And you have to pass Assembly Bill 1400, which is only a policy bill, and then you can apply for the waiver. Now, Ashkara just went to DC and he met with um, you know, the person right underneath Xavier Becerra in the Department of Health and Human Services. And they verified, pass, you've got to pass AB 1400. You can apply for the waiver. And the feedback was very positive that everything would be set to go to unlock that, that federal money. So all we need to do right now is stay focused on the two few steps in front of us, get it out of rules, get it out of health. We will, you know, we have so, we do, you guys, we have a lot of opposition. We have a lot in front of us. So we can't burn ourselves out, you know, being way off into the future. We've got to like do what's right in front of us right now. Um, okay. With that, um, does anybody want to comment? Um, Just very quickly about Rokana, if I may. Sure. So the ACA as it exists today has that provision. So there's somewhat of a duplication, a little bit of expansion in the Rokana bill. Um, we can apply for the waivers whether that bill exists or not. So if you want to mention in conversation, do so, but we don't need to get on it, if you will. It's, it's not the best use of our time. Um, with regard to the waiver, the ACA, as it stands, we need to have a bill, legislation, program, plan of how this is going to be an improvement to the current Affordable Care Act and how it won't um, add to the budget deficit. So, and I believe we need to have 10 years worth of financial projections. So anyone that's saying we need to apply for the waiver now without legislation or without anything else um, doesn't unfortunately grasp the full nature of things. By all means, we need to start getting our ducks in a row because we do have a financial plan. But goal number one now is to get that effing bill passed. That really is where 
all our energies need to be focused. And from what Ash Kalra was saying very late last year, we're pretty close to being guaranteed a hearing on the floor, uh, which is possibly the most progress we've made. But without playing devil's advocate, a hearing on the floor is not passage, but it's certainly one step closer. Thank you. You better put me on mute before I keep rambling. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Thanks, James. There's a couple of comments in chat, so I just want to call attention to them. Robert uh, Copeland put in, DSA Sacramento was one of the organizations that forced the Sacramento City Council to support the resolution to support CalCare, AB 1400, and Medicare for All. So much love and big shout out to DSA Sacramento. Thank you for sharing that, Robert. Um, and then just to fill in, like if you know people don't know, but there was um, huge effort to a, a couple years ago uh, to get resolutions passed in city councils to support Medicare for all. But then this past year, um, the, it was really the leadership of the DSA LA Health Committee, so that's the Democratic Socialists of America, Los Angeles Health Committee, they, and then particularly, I've got to, you know, I mean, that health committee is amazing, but three people in that committee really, really led the charge, Chang Sun Lim, who is a co-chair of HCA LA, Sean Broadbent, who is um, on HCA LA leadership team and um, Sasha Rappaport. Um, they, they were fierce leaders here in LA starting at the um, neighborhood council levels. They, they formed a huge team, they were persistent and then they got the city of Los Angeles to pass a resolution this year to support AB 1400, okay so um, the city of Los Angeles, I think, is the largest city in the country. And it's a big deal because it also unlocks the lobbying power. Um, you know, um, Sacramento is obviously a huge city. So this is what um, Robert's talking about when he says how DSA Sacramento used their leverage there. And then, of course, wanted to shout out DSA LA and shout out to all the activists and organizations that did this, several city councils have passed this resolution supporting AB 1400. And that unlocks their lobbying power to go to Sacramento. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you. And here we are further than we've ever been. Um, I'm gonna skip that and then let's see, because we are talking, we're gonna, to stay focused on steps, not what happens if the bill doesn't pass, um, but what we're doing now to get the bill passed. Um, oh, Maria. So Maria, I see your comment here, but why don't you, do you wanna go ahead and unmute and speak and share? Since you've joined us, Maria, I see you're like, have we considered an aggressive campaign protesting at the homes of legislators? Oh, did she drop off? Okay, Maria, if you're out there um, and you wanna come back on and speak, um, please do. I saw that you were here, but then you dropped off. Um, that is the Maria style. Oh, here she is, letting her in now. Okay. <laughs> Just give her a second. So so Hi. sorry. Hi, Maria. Hi. Hi. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, we only have, we are going to close out this office hours at six. It's going to be a little bit shorter tonight. Um, and I'm going to wrap up again with the actions of what we're going to do. Um, but Maria, um, thank you for being here. And I had just read your comment. Have we considered an aggressive campaign protesting at the home of legislators? I think this is your signature move. So I thought maybe you might want to share a little bit about that. Well, one of the things we did to block SB 625, which would have um, brought, um, brought us closer to the privatization of the water in Southeast and South Central Los Angeles is we went to everyone who um, supported that bill basically to their homes and then 
I'm not joking to their families' homes and said, did you know that so-and-so is supporting a bill that's gonna privatize the water and this is what they're doing. We made flyers, passed them out to the neighbors. We put up canopies, like picnic tables, got you know Popeye's chicken and we were out there for hours um, and an aggressive campaign to, to stop that bill and we were successful doing that. And I, I do think, like I said, that we need to take more aggressive measures because they're just not taking it seriously. And it isn't until you're in their face, um, you know, that, that they, will take you more seriously. People literally took their names off of SB 625 uh, because they didn't wanna be associated with the bill because they knew that we knew what they were trying to do. So I think that, you know, given the fact that we're almost two years into a pandemic, uh, the legislators literally failed to do anything uh, to, to help uh, in every way possible. And it's not even just the pandemic, it's the uh, environmental uh, hazards that we're exposed to and all the things that are happening that we've discussed on so many different meetings that, that they just don't care. So I think that if we, I mean, I would be willing to provide that, you know, I'm not in California right now and I haven't been actually um, since July, but I would be more than happy to provide that information to help organize those, those, uh, those, protests because I mean we we really do need to put more pressure on these people they're just completely indifferent to what's happening and people are really really you know hurting out there and it's really sad and not to mention the long-term effects of COVID and a lot of people have lifelong they're going to have lifelong uh, health issues and and they just like I said they just don't care so I would be more than happy to help with that if anybody wants to do that and um, organize uh, I met some of the people at DSA LA at a healthcare event where we you know laid on the grass in front of the Capitol and pretended we were dead and they had like a drone go over us and take pictures of us and stuff like that. So um, we could coordinate with DSA SAC, DSA in the Bay Area, DSA in San Diego, wherever, and, and start going to these people's homes. I mean, uh, I'm, I think it's a, a good, uh, a good uh, uh, way to, you know, get their attention and to show them that, you know, we're not we're not joking. I mean, we really, really do need this to pass. It, people's lives are at stake. Thank you, Maria, so much. And you are absolutely right. We need to be aggressive. So I would love, and thank you for, you know how like when people are like, you know what you need to do, you should do this, you should do that, but they're never willing to like step up and actually help with that. So thank you for stepping up to actually help organize this and, and also sharing, you know, you know, what you did to block that horrific bell. So would love to talk with you about organizing more aggressive campaigns. The bottom line is this bill is a life and death bill. Exactly. So if somebody was walked their child into the hospital because their child couldn't breathe yeah, that yeah. mother that father that auntie that cousin would be screaming help my child now help my child now and nobody would be like wow she should really be more polite um you know I was going to help your child but since you yelled not going to this yeah. is how this bill needs to be thought about this is our baby that we are in the emergency with, the baby cannot breathe. What would you do for your baby? Would you scream? Would you yell? Would you curse? Would you demand? Would you throw shit? You would do anything to help that baby in that situation, your child, your loved one. That's what this bill is. So I agree. Um, Let's bring on the more aggressive tactics. Thank you for um, being willing to help organize and let's talk more about that. Um, I'm gonna do, if I can, um, actually, Paul, can you screen share? I have um, three graphics about why this bill is the best and um, they're labeled like one, two, three. Could you share the first one? Okay, thanks. Yes, I'll get that right now. Hold on, I gotta get it up first. Okay, let's see, hold on. Okay, I got three. Um, let me go to first. Two, one. Here it is. Okay, let me screen share. There we go. 
So we've had, this is the, um, AB 1400 is the seventh attempt to pass single payer in California. Um, and I think like the last 20 years or 25 years. And, you know, Maria just made like, we, we're in the middle of a pandemic and we still haven't gotten this bill passed. Um, this bill is the best bill we have had yet in California. It is an amazing bill. And I wanna tell you three reasons why this bill is so incredible to inspire you to fight like hell to pass this bill. So unlike previous California single payer bills, AB 1400 closes a loophole which would otherwise allow HMO type corporations to carry over some of the worst aspects of the current health insurance system of unequal tiered coverage and payment schemes that disincentivize patient care while increasing the opportunity for financial fraud. AB 1400 closes that loophole. Um, there is a gentleman, he's an attorney, and I can't believe I'm blanking on his name because I am so appreciate his work. But anyway, he studies all the single payer bills um, that come out all, he's not in California, he's in Minnesota. Um, and he's- Kip studies, Sullivan? Yes, thank you. Um, studies all the single payer bills. And he said there are two true single payer bills out right now. Pramila Jayapal's, which used to be John Conyers, HR 1976 and AB 1400. And the reason is, is because it closes this loophole. Now, right now, there is a fight going on because Medicare is being privatized through Medicare Advantage, okay? And the single payer activists are fighting like hell to stop that from happening. Um, uh, Lynn Heide Cooper, One Payer States, there's so many activists who are on that. Barbara Commons, I think she's actually on here right now. Barbara has, is a major leader in, in you know, fighting this from happening. She did a presentation um, at one of our HCA LA speaker events, but that, that, that was a loophole in the ACA that allowed this, you know, privatization of Medicare through Medicare Advantage, because there was a loophole in the ACA that opened up the door to this horrible thing that we're going to win, Barbara, we're going to win this, we're going to stop this from happening. And so, you know, they say the devil is in the details. This loophole um, that that I just you know talked about that AB fourteen hundred and HR nineteen seventy six closes this HMO ACO loophole that this bill closes. Um, that's what makes this bill a true single payer bill, and um, you know, no devil in the details here. Um, can you put up the slide number two from from this series, Paul? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have to share it again. Um, okay, for the first time in California, a single payer bill intentionally addresses healthcare disparities and integrate, integrates multilingual cultural competent care into its provisions for healthcare equality. So this is really, really important because even when we have single payer, a single payer system, there is still a fight to be had for healthcare justice to end medical apartheid. Now, single payer is a huge step in ending medical apartheid. And the fact that AB 1400 intentionally addresses cultural competency, that is a huge step in healthcare justice. So um, this is super important. And the first California single payer bill to have this, I don't know about you know, the other single payer bills and other 
States, but um, this is incredible. And if you could put up the third slide, Paul. Hold on. Stop sharing. AB 1400 doesn't just talk the talk, it funds its provisions to achieve healthcare, equality, equity, prioritizing resources for underserved communities, rural and urban. Um, and you can take the, the slide down, Paul. There were two articles that came out, which by the way, we just put in our newsletter. If you are not getting our newsletter and you wanna get our newsletter, um, you can go to our toolkit because everything is in our toolkit. Actions are in our toolkit. Getting our newsletter, joining the HCA LA team is in our toolkit. What's our toolkit address? Oh, it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash H-C-A-L-A toolkit, all lowercase. So um, there were two articles that just came out. One was, I'm trying to find it here. One was in the um, Los Angeles Times and it talked about how California professionals, youth and businesses are leaving the state. Um, and um, it also, there was another article that talked about how um, rural hospitals in California are continuing to be closed. And AB 1400 is the solution to both of these issues or a major solution. Number one, I just told you, AB 1400 prioritizes the funding of healthcare. That includes the building of healthcare facilities, hospitals in rural and urban areas that are underfunded. Um, if you go to the west side where I live, um, in Los Angeles, I mean, we've got Cedar Sinai Hospital, we've got St. John's Hospital, we got UCLA Hospital, we got doctors' offices on every block. Delayed care is denied care. When you live in an area that doesn't have a hospital or a healthcare facility or one that's underfunded, that delayed care could mean life or death or you know saving a limb or losing a limb. So it is super important um, that AB 1400 get passed for so many reasons. But, um, you know, imagine the draw AB 1400 would have on bringing businesses and professionals back um, uh, or at least stemming the tide of people moving out of the state. Um, you know, imagine all of the healthcare, the businesses, you know, when you build these healthcare clinics, hospitals, businesses that already exist flourish and new businesses are created, right? Restaurants, um, you know, dry cleaners, you name it. So it's, it's, a, it's a jobs bill. AB 1400 is a jobs bill. Um, it's a revenue generator. It's an investment in our people in our communities, in our economy. It will, AB 1400 will enrich the state. Um, legislators need to be fiscally responsible and responsive to our economy, as well as to uh, those economic factors maintaining our population. AB 1400 um, will do all of those things. Uh, the status quo is extraction and economically destructive for individuals, families, businesses, and communities. Um, so again, AB 1400 is an amazing bill. Um, in our toolkit, I, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, we also have CNA's toolkit in our toolkit. So everything's in our toolkit. Um, so you can go to our toolkit. There are fact sheets. There's the actual text of the bill. There's frequently asked questions. Um, there are links to um, so much important information about this bill. 
And I'm just seeing um, Maria put in the chat at this point, SB 562 would have saved California 148 billion had it passed in 2017. So AB 1400 saves money and more importantly, it saves lives. Taiji is on here. Um, I heard Taiji talk about, and by the way, um, earlier we were talking about how we are working with other organizations, PANA, Progressive Asian Network, um, API, these are organizations we've been working with. They have been incredibly supportive, but Taiji, you know, said really when you read the bill, it's a housing bill. Somebody mentioned housing. Imagine what AB 1400 would do for our unhoused neighbors. So many are suffering from mental health issues, substance issues. So many have full-time jobs, but they are medically they bankrupt because somebody had a brain tumor, somebody got cancer, and they're in drowning in debt to pay these medical bills and have lost their homes. So AB 1400, it is a racial justice bill. It is a housing bill. It is a jobs bill. It is an environmental bill. It is a human rights bill. This is the week to rally like you haven't before. Please go to our toolkit, please send in the pre-written letter. Please call your assembly member every single day. Um, please keep in touch. Please stay connected to each other. One step at a time, these first steps are looking good, but you know we're not done. It's not over until it's over and we will fight every step of the way. So thank you for being here on this CalCare office hours, the first one of this year. I am so moved by all of you. You are all involved in so many wonderful causes. You are so dedicated. We appreciate you teaming up with us for this bill. Um, we love showing up and teaming up with all of you. And together we can do this. And finally, um, if you liked this, what you heard today and you have the resources, put five on it. Um, you can donate by going to, of course, our toolkit, um, but also you can go to bit.ly slash H-C-A-L-A donate. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash H-C-A-L-A donate, all lowercase. You can go to our website, H-C-A-L-A dot org and see all of our great stuff. Again, that's H-C-A-L-A dot org and going to say it one last time because I know it's going to make you guys smile. You can find everything in our toolkit at bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y slash H-C-A-L-A toolkit, all lowercase. And with that, at six o'clock, good night. Happy New Year. Good Happy go New see. Year. Good night, everybody. Thank good you. Good night, everybody. Bye. We are signing off.